Mrs. Trambley here. It is Thursday, January 21st, and we are here to check our bell work. So you should have this all done, and you are looking at yours, making any corrections that you need to so our answers match. So this says write an equation, then solve. So lovely little math stories here. Tammy had fabric that was 6.4 meters long. She used some and now has 1.45 meters. How much did she use? So she had fabric that was 6.4 meters long and she used some. And now she has 1.45 meters that's left over. How much did she use? Well, they give you the total that she has and they tell you how much she has now, but they didn't tell you how much she used to get that total. So this would be a subtraction. We would wanna take 6.4 minus 1.45 to get the amount of fabric. So let's do that. I'm gonna write in my 6.4 minus 1.45. Notice the decimal points are totally lined up because they should be. I'm gonna put my zero above that five because I have to, because I can't take five away from nothing. And this makes it more obvious to see that I am trying to. I need to borrow from this four then. That becomes three, and now I have 10. 10 minus five is five, and I can't take four away from three. So I'm gonna need to borrow from the six. Sorry, my son is watching a game right now. This, I'm actually recording this on Sunday. I'm sorry for the loudness, doing my best. I'm gonna borrow from this six, it becomes five. And now I add 10 to this three and it's 13. 13 minus four is nine. I'm gonna drop down my decimal point and five minus one is four. So 4.95 meters. So I could say F equals 4.95 and that would be fine. Okay, number two. Mark is competing in the long jump. His first jump was 3.56 meters. So far, the longest jump in the event is 4.02 meters. How much farther must Mark jump to tie for first place? So it says that his first jump is 3.56 meters and the longest jump is 4.02. It asks how much farther he has to go to tie. So it's, you could look at this as 3.56 plus what would give you 4.02? But what you'd have to do to figure out what you're adding to that is you'd have to subtract those two values. So this is a subtraction problem. 4.02 minus 3.56 equals um, J for jump. Sounds good. All right, 4.02 minus 3.56. So you should have those lined up. And I look and I can't borrow from this zero. First off, I can't take six away from two, right? So I need to borrow, this has nothing. I'm gonna borrow from this four and it becomes three, so now I have 10. I'm gonna borrow from this 10, it becomes nine. And now I can do 12 minus six to get six. And nine minus five is four. I drop down my decimal point, three minus three is zero. So 0 0.46 or 46 hundredths of a meter is what J would equal, that's how much farther he would need to jump to be able to tie. Last one of these, Sasha has some ribbon. After she used 23 and 8 tenths centimeters of it, she has 50 centimeters left. How much ribbon did she start with? So one more time, she has some ribbon, we don't know how much. She used 23.8 centimeters of it. She had 50 centimeters left. How much ribbon did she start with? So if she has 50 centimeters that's left after using 23.8, our answer is not gonna be lower than how much she has left, right? This means I need to add these together to figure out how much she started with. So we can say 23.8 plus 50 equals R for ribbon. Now, you could put 50 plus 23.8, it's not gonna matter because the commutative property, this is an addition problem. I'm gonna go ahead and put my decimal point right there after the 50 so I know where to put it when I'm lining it up. And now I see 23.8 up here and I'm going to write 50 lined up right there and I'm gonna go ahead and put in my zero so it doesn't look weird. Eight plus zero is eight. 
bring down my decimal point, three plus zero is three, and two plus five is seven. So 73 and eight tenths centimeters of ribbon. That is how much she started with. And let's see if that makes sense. Like if Sasha had 73.8 centimeters and she used 23.8, wouldn't she have 50 centimeters left? Yes, so I know we did the right thing. Okay, we are on numbers four and five, and for four and five, we're supposed to write the number in standard form. So with these, this is where we wanna start from right and work our way to the left. We wanna look for the lowest place value. And in this case, I see one hundredth. I don't see one thousandth. So I'm gonna start with one hundredth. I'm gonna put a six in the hundredths place. Now the next one over would be the tenths and I don't see anything multiplied by a tenth. So I'm gonna put a zero in the tenths place. And I know I need a decimal point in front of the tenths. So this is done so far. The next one over would be the ones place and I don't see anything multiplied by one. So I would put a zero in the ones place. The next one over would be the tens place, and I do see five times 10. So I'll put a five in the tens place. The next one over from the tens would be the hundreds, and I see a four in the hundreds. The next one over from the hundreds would be the thousands, and as I look through, I don't see anything multiplied by a thousand. And the next one over from a thousand will be 10,000, and there should be an eight in that place. So 80,450 and six hundredths is what you should have. Right, next one, and I mix these up. I did that to you last week too. I'm gonna look for the farthest right place value that's given, and it looks like 100th is. So I'm gonna put my six in the hundredths place, and now I'm gonna look for tenths next, because that's what will be next to hundredths, and I do see seven times one tenth. I know my decimal point goes in front of the tenths. All right, the next place over will be the ones place, and I do see a three times one. The next one over will be tens, and there's nothing multiplied by 10. The next would be 100, there's nothing multiplied by 100, but I do have nine times 1,000, so I'm gonna put a nine in the thousands place. So I would have 9,003 and 76 hundredths. All right, a little bit of rounding here. For number six and seven, I ask you to round to the nearest 10. So the first thing we have to do is figure out, okay, which two tens is 43 between, and 43 is between 40 and 50. The halfway mark would be 45, 43 is less than halfway, so 43 would round to 40. For 287, 287 is between 280 and 290, if I'm looking at the nearest 10, right? So halfway between 280 and 290 is 285, and 287 is more than halfway, so that would round up to the 290. For eight and nine, I ask you to round to the nearest hundreds. So we have to figure out which two hundreds each is between. And I have a five in the hundreds place. That means this is either gonna be 500 or 600. The halfway mark is 550, and 568 is more than halfway. That means 600 is the nearest hundred that it would round to. For number nine, the number in the hundreds place is a three. So this is either going to be 1,300 or 1,400. Remember, we're rounding to the nearest hundreds. You're asking yourself which two hundreds is between. The halfway mark is 1,350, and 1,329 is less than that. So this would round to 1,300. And for 10 and 11, I ask you to round to the nearest thousand. So 6,084 is between 6,000 and 7,000. If I'm rounding to the nearest thousands, that's what I'm looking for. The halfway mark is 6,500, and 6,084 is less than halfway, so it would round to 6,000. For number 11, this four is in the thousands place. So this is either gonna be 54,000 or 55,000. The halfway mark would be 54,500, and 54,497 is less than halfway, so 54,000 would be rounded to the nearest thousand. You are all set. Good luck with the rest of your work for today.